Every civilization has asked themselves, how is the best way to live? All the great philosophers, Plato, Aristotle, they were all obsessed with the question, how is the best way to live? And I think in some ways, the work-life balance is the modern culture's attempt to ask and answer this question. How is the best way to live? What is the best way to live? What makes the best life? What makes your best life? In order to do that, we, we have to ask ourselves some questions. You know, what do you like about your life today? Uh, what don't you like about your life today? Uh, do you feel trapped by any of the things in your life today? If you went to the doctor next week and he told you you had one year to live, what would you do with the next year of your life? If you inherited $10 billion tomorrow, what would you do with the money? And what would you do with the rest of your life? What's holding you back from the life you really want? These are some of the questions we've got to explore if we're gonna live deeply satisfying lives personally and professionally. Though success is a relevant term, still, the word carries a lot of importance and meaning to a lot of people. We want to give our best at work and home too, but most of the time, this is not possible. The real question is, can we give the best at our work and be successful and at the same time still lead a rich and fulfilling life? The answer is yes, we can. We do come across many people who are both successful and happy with their career and life. After keen observation, we found out that they take their life lightly and work seriously. In the lighter side of life, they relax, rejoice, and spend quality time with family and friends. And on the work front, they are focused, agile, and highly result-oriented. How do they do that? There is a way to achieve balance, and let's talk about that. First and foremost, if you're ever going to do it, and you're ever going to get better at it, a greater level of proficiency, you need to decide why do you need it? I know that sounds so basic, but everything we know about so much of human behavior and motivation comes from that question of why do I care about this? Why is it important to me? Why is it meaningful to me? And a lot of people haven't really revisited their life for a long time. And so they're just kind of taking on more obligations, more projects, more things to do, diving deeper into sort of distraction without ever saying, what's really important to me right now? Why do I want more balance? And what does that mean to me specifically? So for example, you might say, you know what, more balance to me, Brennan, is important because I, I, I just want to have more sanity in my life and I want more time with my kids. And I would say, well, what does that mean exactly, more time with your kids, as an example? And you would say, well, I want to have more time at the dinner table that I'm not worried about I had to go text something or respond to this email. Or you might say, well, Brennan, I want to get two more hours of sleep every night because recently we had a kid and it's impossible and everything's going crazy. Whatever it is for you, you need to know why do you want it and what specifically would it look like? You see, we've had this 20-year uh, obsession with you know, the work-life balance concept, but the truth is I don't really think people want balance. What they want is to have a deeply satisfying personal life and a deeply satisfying professional life and they want to know that both are possible at the same time. Stop the balancing act. You know, this may sound counterintuitive, but forget balance. It isn't about balance. It's a, it's a nonsense notion. Life balance doesn't exist. Look, think of two scales balancing. In order for them to be in balance, they have to be of equal weighting. So brought to life, that means that everything that's important to you, you need to do in equal measure. Is that possible? No, it's ridiculous. So quit trying. So it is, it is, it is the last thing you should be thinking about. Don't worry about life balance. Here's what I would suggest you replace it with, life blending. It's about picking the things you like and then spending 100% of your attention and focus in them while you're in it and then letting go and then doing something else. When does my work end and my life begin? My personal life? I have no idea because it's all blended together. Work and life cannot be balanced. They can only be integrated, because in the act of balancing both, either life or work would definitely weigh you down. I went out there and I interviewed people, and, and we did online surveys, and we did phone surveys. And when I asked people to talk about the most satisfying times in their life, they never talked about a time of balance. When I asked people to talk about the most satisfying times in their lives, 
they talked about working 70 hours a week and really cracking out a project or laying on the beach in the Bahamas for three or four days. They talked about extremes and the reality is is that they were the most satisfying times in their lives, not a time when they had perfect balance in their life. And I think that just confirmed the idea that people aren't really hungering for balance. People want satisfaction. Uh, they want personal satisfaction. And yes, they want professional satisfaction. And most of all, they want to know that both are possible at the same time. Managing time. Some people make excellent justification saying that they have to spend less time with family because they have to work a bit harder to make the life for their family more comfortable. On the other hand, people make smart excuses at work, blaming their personal time consumption for dealing with life's inevitable issues. We are obsessed as a country, as a nation, in being on time because we think time is the ultimate value maker. The fact is, the investment of time has zero value. The only way time has valence, it's in its intersection with energy. If the energy is aligned with the time and aligned with the mission, time becomes priceless. What is important about time management is not just spending hours of time, but spending quality time both at work and life. We have 168 hours in a week and we are never going to have another one. For most of us, our dance cards are already full. We don't have any more time. But energy can be expanded and it can be regularly renewed. In physics, energy is simply the capacity to do work. So the more energy we have, the more work we're capable of doing. Your focus should be on building and regularly renewing your energy across the four dimensions of your life. Physical, which is the quantity of your energy. Emotional, which is the quality. Mental, which is the focus. And spiritual, which is the purpose to which you put your energy. We need all four in order to fire on all cylinders. Quality time in life means creating better moments and events for you and the people connected with you. Quality time at work means delivering results rather than just doing a bunch of tasks that don't produce expected results. Time management alone never lived up to its expectations. All time management did, it took us from being absent to being present. How many times have we been present for a meeting and not been in the meeting? And in our personal lives, how many times have we been present for a child's game or a child's concert or an event, but we haven't been there? You know, I've worked with so many executives who, who leave work early. They go to their son or daughter's game, but they've got their laptop open during the game. They've managed their time, but they haven't managed their energy. Energy management takes you from being present to being engaged. When you bring your full and your best energy right here, right now, that's engagement. Engagement brings your life, I mean literally, to the surface. I mean, it brings everything that matters to the surface, and you really become alive with everything that matters most. Again. Prioritizing the majors, both at work and life, is the real key here. Be more explicit in communicating your boundaries. Be more explicit in communicating your time. So if you're going to go to a meeting, sit down and say, guys, I have 45 minutes today for this meeting. Can't go a second over. And they're like, oh, okay. And stop going over on your times. If you said you were going to work out for an hour, work out for an hour, stop, go. A lot of the, what I call bleed time, ends up taking away from our balance. Bleed time is those things where you're, you go over on things that you didn't need to go over on. You know, that, that one cocktail with your friend ended up being on 16, you know, and you lost the entire night now. Or that one, you know, lunch meeting you were gonna have turned into four hours and now you've lost the day of work. Or that one show you were gonna watch before getting back to work turned into a whole season. And you're like, oh no, the, 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 the day, the night is gone. Uh, that's called bleed time. It's where so much time just dissipates because you didn't stick to your mark. So set your boundary, communicate it clear with people, and don't go over on things anymore. A lot of people, if they just started with the intention, said, we're only gonna do this for this much time, and then we gotta go. If they stuck to that, they would get better balance. Bottom line, when you prioritize something, you will always find time. Energy. Some people get too exhausted at work, and by the time they return home, they look like almost melted candles. The work-life integration demands energy both at work and in life. 
Nothing is going to impact personal and professional satisfaction like having more energy. Our experience of life expands the more energy we have. The more energy you have, the more vital your relationships are going to be. The more energy you have, the more creative uh, you're going to be in the workplace, the more innovative you're going to be in the workplace. It's all about energy in many respects and helping people increase the level of energy in their life is critical. Leading a healthy lifestyle with proper diet, good sleep and exercise can generate ample physical energy. On the other hand, the mental energy is determined by our thoughts. And if we focus too much on unwanted and anxious thoughts, we are sure to experience mental exhaustion and stress. The quality of thoughts determines our mental state. If we can focus on what is going great with life, we can not only energize ourselves, but also rub on the same infectious energy to others as well. If you want more balance in your life, you need to improve your health. You need to get back and get in balance in your well-being, and that begins with sleep, that begins with meditation. If you add more sleep and you add more meditation, you are more focused throughout the day, you are more productive. We can prove by neuroscience you gain 30% more cognitive ability, and that just means you're much more efficient and effective throughout the day, so you get more done, so you can be more balanced, so you can deal with stress better, so that you're stronger to say no to people, so that you recognize and see distractions versus getting sucked into them. All these things will help you get back in control of your life. You might not ever gain perfection. You might not ever gain perfect balance, but you can get better balance and you must believe in that. Mindfulness. Mindfulness is the present moment awareness. It is a process of actively noticing new things. And when we do that, it puts you in the present. Mindfulness requires a mental disconnect from the previous atmosphere. When you are at home and thinking more about work problems, you are not being mindful. You are just preoccupied. When you are at work and you tend to think about your personal issues, you are not mindful at work. You need to intellectually and emotionally disconnect from other distractions in order to give your 100% both at work and life. If you're wondering what highly productive people have in common, I don't really look to personality traits. I look to emotional intelligence competencies. I think highly productive people have in common a high level of self-management. They're able to keep focused on the task at hand. They're able to keep uh, focused on a long-term goal and ignore the distractions that would take them away from that and they're able to put a positive spin on setbacks and obstacles so that they can keep motivated, keep going. Manage gadgets well. Technology gadgets like smartphones and personal laptops can either be an invader or a liberator. Technology can be an interruption, but there are acceptable interruptions when something urgent has to be communicated. Technology is meant to help people to connect better and to be accessible at all times. Accessibility need not be a challenge here. Instead, it can be a great advantage to solve major issues both at work and life. The right approach is to use the technology as an obedient servant, rather than bad master that will distract you from focusing on the majors of life. Sometimes you have to learn to say no, because where you've said yes in too many areas, that's all these hours you're handing out. Right? That's the way I want you to think about it. All your yeses to other people, those are hours. And the more hours you hand out, the less balance you feel. So at some point you have to stop handing out so many hours to people. Delegate the minor tasks. We can't do everything in life. We can lead a rewarding life if we can focus again on the majors of life. How many times have you taken on responsibilities like, I don't know, creating a PowerPoint, making a call to a client, or even agreeing to get the groceries for your family because you're somehow magically capable of doing it better than anyone else. For all of those little and sometimes big tasks that could be handled by someone else, give them away. If you're ever going to find work-life balance, you need to learn to delegate. Sure, the PowerPoint may not be as amazingly stunning as if you made it, or the grocery list might be missing an item or two, but these things can and will get done by others and done well enough. This is just one of the keys to work-life balance. Let go of micromanaging perfection 
and settle for well enough. Sharing of responsibility and distribution of tasks can help you gain surplus time to focus on what is important at work and life. Let people do what they're meant to do. Delegate tasks and promote teamwork. Instead of getting weighed down by too many tasks, build the support system that will handle tasks which don't need your skills or presence. Outcome orientation. We are all caught up in the activity of everyday business, running errands just like a hamster on a wheel. Eventually, we are all busy and think that the day is too short to complete all the listed tasks. This is what we need to do first. Stop focusing on tasks and activities that do not produce any results. Most people aren't out of balance, they're in distraction. It's not that there's a lack of balance that's available to them, it's that they're watching hours of television. A lot of folks spend time just looking at lifestyle magazines or, you know, people magazines or watching, you know, silly news that has nothing to do with anything but gossip and, and tripe and scandal. And that's not going to help you ever achieve balance. Get rid of those things that aren't adding value to your life and you start to realize, wow, I got another three hours to play with the day. Matter of fact, did you know that the average American watches four hours of television a day? Now, you might not watch four hours of television a day, but let's say you consume four hours of media between Facebook and Twitter and Instagram or Pinterest, between the television, between magazines, between all this random stuff that you pay attention to. If you didn't consume that and you got, let's say, four hours of the day back, that would change everything. That four hours a day over the average adult lifespan is 13 years, 24 seven. If you got back more than a decade of your time, would it be worth it? Well then all you would have to do is get rid of more distraction each year of your life, each week of your life, each day of your life. I really look at it very closely each day and I go, what could distract me? And I'm aware of when I'm in distraction because that time going to distraction is stealing from opportunity or joy or balance in all these other areas. It's easy to get on autopilot and spend hours without getting much done. Focusing on activities without a clear outcome can be wasteful. The thumb rule is focus on the outcome and don't get carried away by schedules and meetings. In case you wanted to share more ideas on this topic, please feel free to write in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and subscribe.